In this module, we'll learn how observation and sense making come together to help us build situation awareness. When we look at the various definitions of situational awareness, they have, they have certain elements in common. The first element is observation, the way that we take in information from the world around us, either through our own observations, our own senses, by communicating with others is an important aspect of that. But then we have to do something with those observations, and that's the process of, of, of sense making. Uh, the idea of sense making is, is, is putting those observations, recognizing the unique context and trying to figure out what they mean for you and anticipating what they'll mean for your near future and using that information to inform your decisions and your actions. Those perceptions, both your own and those around you, are important to that sense making piece. Decisions and actions are often very similar and they're, they're impacted by more than just our observations and our sense making, but they are the ultimate expression of what we're trying to accomplish here. To build your awareness of a given situation, you certainly start with observation. With observation, we utilize all of our senses. We notice wind shifts by the feel on the back of our neck, or we see a change in a smoke column. Those observations are important. If you come around the, the corner of your division and you look up and you say to yourself, wow, I didn't expect that, uh, that's a moment of an adjustment to your situation awareness. Something just caught your attention that you didn't expect. If the change that takes place, say a wind shift, change in direction of a flaming front, takes place behind a ridge line where you can't see it, your observations are limited. You're not in a great place to observe that change, which is why we utilize the, the concept of lookouts so that we can communicate with that individual that's in a different perspective, in a different place, and gather that information through communication with that individual. When you begin to actively observe your environment, it's like turning on a flashlight with a broad beam. You're taking in a lot of information, but none of it's in real fine detail. But when something grabs your attention, you focus in on that thing. When that happens, all the events going on around us continue, but we aren't actively observing them. Our goal with situation awareness is to train ourselves that when something grabs our attention, it is important that we do focus on that but we can't stay focused on that. If we stay focused, then that becomes an attention trap. The idea of take five at two is just to take a pause, to zoom out and question what our perceptions of our current environment are like. We could be head down digging line or observing a smoke over there and not paying attention to the hose lay we put in an hour ago. Ask each other, hey, what have you been seeing that I'm not? It's intended to get us to take a pause and look at the world around us. The next component of situation awareness is making sense of those observations. The idea of sense making, of putting meaning to our experiences in the context of the situation that we're in. And that's based on our experience, our training, what we've seen before, what we've done before. But it's not limited to that. Looking for how our current situation is different than our previous experiences is incredibly important. Our own experience, while it informs our decision, can also be an attention trap in and of itself. As we observe our surroundings and as we make sense of them, we form perceptions. And that perception of our environment is unique and it's subjective. Somebody standing right next to you looking at seemingly the same things could come up with a very different perception of situation where Changing your perspective or talking to someone with a different perspective is a powerful tool to help you make sense of a situation.
Colonel Boyd coined the term UDA, observe, orient, decide, and act. And really it was his method of describing situation awareness. But we have to understand that the, the OODA loop was, was designed, was uh, Boyd's concept, was all about one pilot in a cockpit of a fighter aircraft uh, fighting, pitting himself against another single pilot in an enemy aircraft. And for him, observe, orient, decide, and act, observe the connection to observation and situation awareness. Orientation is how he describes sense making, decision and action. For Boyd, it was all about who could move through the OODA loop the fastest. And uh, if you were faster than your opponent, you lived and, and they didn't. For us, we have to recognize that situation awareness and going through the OODA loop is different. It's not individual and we aren't pitting ourselves against a conscious thinking enemy like Boyd was. We're in an environment, a social environment, where we're often not alone. And in fact, we, we really need to be a part of that community to really be able to operate safely and successfully. It's by communicating amongst each other, uh, by, by confirming and denying what we're seeing, making sense of our observations that we can truly make decisions that lead to our accomplishing objectives and getting home safely at the end of the day. So while we can use the OODA loop to describe what we're doing, uh, we do have to understand its limitations. Using loss of situation awareness was a common way of explaining a really complex event kind of in the, the old view of looking at safety and accidents. What we understand today is that simplifications like loss of situation awareness or, or human error really don't get to uh, what that person that was operating in a complex environment saw and understood of what was going on around them and how they made decisions in the moment. Loss of situation awareness is really dependent upon hindsight. A hindsight bias that where you know information, you know outcome. That, uh, that the person in that operation, in that moment, could never have known. If they knew that things were gonna go bad, that someone was gonna get hurt or killed, and they knew what information would be important, like you do in hindsight, they would have made different decisions and, and performed different actions. Everyone plays a part in this. Even when your job is to be head down digging fire line, you also need to remember to pick your head up. Observe what is going on around you, and when you notice a change, speak up about it. By coming together and critically thinking about our observations and collectively making sense of them, we can better understand our situation, anticipate what might happen, mentally simulate options, and carry out those most likely to lead to safe mission accomplishment. How can you and your crew better observe your environment? How can you participate in the sense-making process? How can you be ready to adapt your plan? Remember the next time you walk onto the fire line that your situation awareness will never be perfect, but it can always be better. <laughs>